Hello, hello, and hello. First off, a uh, big thank you to Andy and uh, everyone for organizing this brilliant event today. It's an absolute privilege uh, to be here on the stage speaking to you. Now, I'm aware I'm uh, uh, the third presenter, so I'm going to start with a question just to check that you're all awake and listening. And yes, I can see you up there at the top. So uh, uh, this question will be, uh, I'm the role, uh, my role is to be the head of product for BBC Sport. So uh, how many of you have heard of Match of the Day? OK, OK. How many of you have ever watched Wimbledon, followed the Olympics with the BBC? Ever use a BBC Sport website or app? Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. So we're among friends. That's excellent, because that means I can tell you what I'm about to tell you. Um, OK, so um, I'm here today to tell you about our mission. And our mission at BBC Sport is uh, to redefine free-to-air sport for the digital age. So I, in my role as head of product, I uh, lead the development teams that are responsible for building, shaping, and running our digital offering. And the second element of my role is to partner with the BBC Sport board and leadership team to accelerate our transformation as a business, to move from being a traditional broadcaster to being an internet fit service for our audiences. And if you think about that role, it's not that unusual. I would say that each of us in our digital teams have that dual responsibility. Of course, first and foremost, we're responsible for delivering uh, the digital proposition. But equally, we have a heap of expertise that can really help to transform businesses and ultimately provide better services for your customers, clients, and audiences, in our case. So what I'm going to do in the next 20 minutes is run through some of the techniques that we use as we go about trying to uh, change our business. And our hope is simple, really. We hope that in sharing what we're doing, and uh, be honest, we have by no means cracked it. But we hope that by sharing some of the things we do do, that we can provoke uh, an idea, a spark, a thought, a conversation, or something that can help uh, you go back uh, to, your, to your place of work and instigate a bit of change. OK, so uh, just before I crack on then, I just wanted to uh, home in uh, a little bit on our purpose. So the word free to air up there is particularly important for us. The sports market is crowded and fragmented. There's a whole heap of great sports coverage out there, um, from BT to Sky, obviously a, a new entrance in the market like Amazon, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. But typically, uh, their business models rely on people to pay for that sports coverage, either with money, through a subscription, or with their data. And for us, we feel, as 70% of the nation are sports fans, it's really important that there's a great standard of coverage available free at the point of consumption to uh, all of the UK public. And that's really our differentiator as we go about uh, trying to shape our service. OK, so for those of you not familiar with our proposition, we have, um, we're the UK's leading service. We have 20 million browsers a week. It's centered around two core elements. The first is our 24-7 journalism. So essentially, we're a place any sports fan or, uh, can come to to get the latest news, scores, fixtures, results across any device at any time of the day. The second part of our service that really brings it to life is the big events. Uh, so those big events are really, really important for us uh, as a business. Um, they can't, don't come any bigger than the World Cup uh, this summer, and they're really important for us because they give us a huge opportunity to reach new audiences. So we, around, uh, we expect to see around a 50% spike in traffic during an event like the World Cup. So that means we'll have around 30 million people, 30 million browsers, sorry, in the UK using our offering. And that's a great opportunity for us to really uh, engage with a new audience, strengthen their habit uh, with BBC Sport, and also to market the best of the BBC Online offering to them uh, while they're with our service. OK, so so far, you know, we've gone through who we are. I just wanted to take you through a little bit about how we go about doing uh, our jobs and our roles at the BBC. So I think uh, Andy, right at the start, mentioned uh, the importance of uh, purpose. And we're absolutely firm believers in that, too. Um, we know that to get the best results, it's really crucial 
that we empower our teams, because there are multiple agile teams in delivering our, our service at scale, with clear, clear uh, guidelines about the why of what we do and how they should best go about um, uh, their roles day to day. It's important for us that they're autonomous and empowered to do that. So we put a lot of effort up front into making sure that everyone's on the same page in terms of the why of what we do. Um, one way uh, that we try and get the message across is through a little bit of a game like this. So who here knows this famous Tony? Let's see. Anyone familiar with the Director General Tony Hall? Excellent. So uh, the key challenge we're asking ourselves is, does can the objectives described by um, our director, BBC Director General Tony Hall make it all the way through to this guy, Tony? Uh, a lot of blank faces now. I like that. <laughs> uh, so anyone, uh, anyone, anyone met Tony Scholes? No? Excellent. You're missing out. His legend has not crossed the Pennine. So Tony is important for us because he is our last line of defense before our services reach the audience. Tony is the foundation of our test team at BBC Sport. So the way in which uh, we're thinking about communicating our purpose is, can I cle clearly articulate the objectives right from the top of the organization, right across BBC Sport, uh, at all levels, through from that Tony, Tony Hall, to this Tony, Tony Scholes, our, uh, our lead of our test team. And if we do that, we know that everyone in our department has a clear sense of purpose with which to go about their day. So the way in which we kind of break that down for people and try and make it simple is like this. So everyone uh, is familiar with the BBC's overall mission. We inform, educate, and entertain. We're here. Uh, Tony Hall's stated aim is to reinvent the BBC for a new generation, which is why in sport, our mission is to redefine sport coverage for a digital age, cement our position as the UK's favorite sport service, based around four key pillars of content. So I've talked a bit about journalism and big events, and I'll come on to younger audiences and more sport for more people in a moment. From there, we drive some digital priorities, and uh, they're the themes with which we uh, focus our work. And ultimately, that leads to KPIs. Right, and those KPIs are probably very familiar to uh, many of you in digital businesses. They're about reach, driving frequency, and time spent with our service. Like many media businesses, we're seeing that the uh, um, uh, younger audiences have different habits to the generations that have gone before. It's really, really important we make the most of the opportunity of digital to uh, uh, increase the amount of time they spend well with us. Uh, spending it well is a crucial, crucial part of it. Uh, to uh, ensure that they're getting full value for their license fees. Right, okay, and those KPIs are also important because they're fundamental in how we go um, about doing our work. Um, so this is in big shouty caps for a reason. Uh, this is one of the fundamental principles we argue for for our team in a business. You know, in, a, in, a, in a working as we do in a uh, sort of a traditional uh, broadcast company, it's very easy for someone senior to come up with well-intentioned, potentially uh, successful, but often slightly misguided feature requests or something that they feel can enhance, enhance our offering. You know, can we have a big red button at the top of the website when a goal goes in or, or whatever it may be? Um, uh, so crucially, we believe that our, um, uh, the best way for us to um, achieve, achieve what we need to as a business is to focus on object objectives and use all the expertise in our digital team, from the developers to the UX guys through to audience research, to really collaborate and focus on uh, meeting those objectives in creative ways. OK, so far, so good, I hope, but not that transformational. So let's up the ante a little bit. So um, it felt appropriate when in Leeds to use a Leeds uh, style of communication. So um, massive apologies to anyone from Sky or Skybet. I can assure people no Sky logos were harmed in the making of that slide. <laughs> but it did feel that this was a good opportunity to really sort of think about, codify, and articulate six things that we do as a digital team 
that help us push and transform our business. Six bets, if you like, that we hope add up and accumulate to change in our business. Too much, sorry, sorry. Okay, all right. Let's start with number one. Okay, right. Um, number one, uh, okay, put your hands up if you're old enough to remember when Facebook was cool. Uh, a lot of people had to think about that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, we've heard a lot about uh, scale and resilience already, actually, today. But I think, you know, if you'd have gone to Palo Alto Facebook HQ a few years ago, um, the walls would be covered in posters like that, move fast and break things. But obviously, as they grow, they realize um, with great scale comes great responsibility. And obviously, working at the BBC, with the huge brand heritage and the scale of the operation we have, that responsibility is at the forefront of our mind. So breaking things is never really an option, especially during World Cup finals and things like that. So um, for us, we really invest in our platform and, the and, the and are really proud of the stability and resilience of it under the high lows we see during big sports and news events. Okay, so the second poster up there uh, is a WK, WK one, uh, uh, which I uh, completely agree with. The strategy is delivery. And absolutely, I think, in terms of trying to transform the business, it's key that you're able to show that you can consistently deliver and iterate uh, the service and meet deadlines and uh, those promises that you make. Now, um, for those of you that would like uh, a bit more of an insight into how, uh, how we do all that and the platform uh, that we've created to allow us to do it, which is called Morph, uh, Matthew Clark, our head of architecture, is going to be doing a talk right here on this stage later this afternoon. So please do come along and find out about the inner workings. But crucially, those two things are really, really important for us. Because when we're trying to transform the business, that resilience and ability to deliver is, um, is a cornerstone of our credibility in building relationships with the people right across BBC Sport and the BBC that we want to change their behaviours. You know, if you were me, would you rather be having a conversation with a director of sport about why the World Cup broke or why, how some new enhancements or features that we've done uh, has helped contribute to an increased time spent across connected televisions? You know, those things, those fundamentals are what earn you the right to have those more insightful and transformative conversations. Okay, number two, um, product and editorial and partnership. So um, for us, um, the BBC is a content business, and the key people we work with are editorial teams, the people who make TV, radio, and digital content. And what's absolutely fundamental for us in, um, in sort of going about delivering our service is that we have a one-team approach, that we really work hard to develop a common language and way of working together that makes uh, it easier for us to uh, develop our offering. Um, so if you, um, so there's a couple of good examples of that uh, on the screen up there. So we know that for us to achieve our aims, we're going to not only need to develop a great um, interfaces and stable products, we're also going to need to change up the content offering. So um, we're try constantly experimenting, trying out new things. So for example, um, the Pep Guardiola picture there is a prototype we've got at the moment. Um, uh, that's out there, which is uh, essentially aimed at creating a fun and dynamic short form uh, personalized sports experience uh, that is engage, uh, engaging for younger audiences. Um, so um, uh, that's something we've got out in the field, we're testing at the moment. And on the other side, there's a nice example, just a fun little quiz engine we built in house. It's a great example because one of our engineers actually built this in a 10% time. They essentially were um, looking at ways of trying to drive up participation across our service. And that's um, um, it actually launched last week, just in time for Arsene Wenger stepping down from Arsenal. So that's a real, real screenshot from that being used in the service. So this partnership is really, really fundamental for us. Um, and it's because if you want to transform the business, think about a time when you've had an adversarial relationship with stakeholders in your, in your, uh, in your place of work. It really is just a waste of energy and time, right? Um, you, can, you can spend so much time um, uh, uh, and lose momentum 
in petty squabbles if you're not careful. So really investing up front in those big relationships and, and getting the right engagement, and that means also being recognized as much more than a service provider, is fundamental to us as we do that. So, you've established your credibility, you've built great relationships, what are you going to do next? Well, I think having those two things in place puts you in a great position to be able to make the most of your digital expertise and really start to reinvent the business and the business model um, using those uh, digital skills that you have. So here's a good example of some of the things we've been working on that have uh, helped us do that. Um, in terms of um, uh, platform thinking, we, in the last few years over in Salford, we've been able to create a live event platform. So it's built in sport, but it's um, a single shared live event capability that helps our editorial teams right across the BBC provide a gold standard of live coverage for big events, be it general elections, royal weddings, World Cups, or even Glastonbury and Arts events. And in creating that, what we've done is we've been able to change, um, change the mindset and the business model about being able to deliver value right outside the tram lines of sport, um, which uh, challenged the cultural norm at the time. And also, this, because we've built this capability, this is what's powering our, recent, uh, our recently launched initiative to offer 1,000 hours of extra live sport each year. Because we built a platform that worked for all of the BBC, we were able to relatively easily extend it to partners beyond the BBC, and that opened up a way for us to get a thousand hours of extra content onto our platform, which is all aimed uh, at us uh, meeting that departmental strategy goal about getting more sport to more people. It's a win-win for us and our partners, who are typically sports governing bodies, because we're opening up our massive shop window of uh, 20 million browsers a week to uh, th those sports. Uh, and, um, and for us, they're working, they're working to provide that content with us. So it's a way of us both getting something out of that relationship. The other big way in which we're trying to reinvent the proposition is through personalization. Obviously, on the internet, it's not about broadcasting. It's possible to have that one-to-one -one relationship with audience members. And uh, we're still, admittedly, in fairly early stages of uh, really making the most of that possibility. But um, our MySport proposition in the mobile app is a good example of that, where we allow audiences to, um, uh, to customize what they see within the app. And during a major event, around half a million people will use that as a way of tailoring it to uh, get information on the teams and sports they care about most. So why is all that important? I think it's because it establishes as much more than a service provider. We're able to bring in digital ways of thinking that stretch the existing norm and help change and shape the BBC uh, uh, to better meet its objectives. OK, stay with me. Number four, hustling for traffic. Now, I'll tell you what, outside of the BBC, this one might be a bit of a no-brainer. Um, but if you think about the relationship the BBC has in people's lives, um, um, you know, when a big sports event on, for many, many years, uh, the BBC was able to rely on people just rocking back in the armchair, pressing one on the remote control, and hey presto, the Olympics appeared before them. And actually, in the early days of um, uh, the internet, because BBC were uh, out there relatively early with a strong news and sport proposition, that first generation of web users also esta established a strong habit. They came straight to the BBC uh, to consume those big events. But as we know, younger audiences don't navigate and consume content like that. And that forces us to rethink how we market and get our content out to people. So I've touched on three examples of how we've done that. Um, so taking the Winter Olympics as a case study, uh, the first thing we do and, uh, is maximize the huge reach of BBC Online overall. So we know that every month uh, in the UK, um, that uh, BBC Online reaches uh, over 90% of young online adults. They're not necessarily coming to sport, but they're coming somewhere to that BBC Online proposition. Only Facebook and Google have higher reach in the UK each month, right? So we make the most of putting that opportunity by putting our content right across BBC Online. So in the last couple of years, we've worked really hard to ensure that all of those live event streams and that 1,000 extra hours I just mentioned is all available in iPlayer, for example, as well as on sport. 
And it's not unusual that during a major event, we'd expect around 50% of the traffic to that spot content to come, uh, to come directly into iPlayer. Beyond that, we obviously work to evolve our product set to uh, enable people to discover our service as well. A good example of this would be the way in which we work to um, make our journalism and live event service available via Google AMP, which again is one way of securing prominent position in, we know, in what we know is a really um, key discovery gateway for younger audiences, helping funnel people through to us when the game's on. And beyond that, we work with our business development teams to target bespoke deals with social media networks, really especially work with those networks that we know reach audiences who don't typically come to us. A great example of that would be the way in which um, we uh, partner with Snapchat to get uh, content out there around the Winter Olympics and essentially use it as a marketing platform to raise awareness amongst a, a demographic that may not use our service, that we've got the coverage of the games, be it on TV or online. So why, why is that important in transforming the business? I think it's, trans it's important <coughs> for us because it challenges the prevailing cultural norms, right? So you know, for us, the BBC is a broadcaster, and there's a bit of a sense of if we stick it on TV, lots of people come and watch it. And it takes years to erode that kind of attitude. And this is one way of us chipping away at it and becoming much more effective at getting our content to younger audiences. I mean, in your business, it's probably something different, but I think it's definitely, definitely worth thinking about what those cultural norms are that really you feel hold, hold you back and push against them and come up and, uh, with an alternative solution. Okay, number five. Um, when you, uh, I was watching a lot of Netflix uh, videos recently, and uh, they talk a lot about hard to copy innovation, and I think they're bang on. And for us, that means maximizing our USPs. So if you think about what our USPs are, we have great reach and coverage across TV, radio, and online. And for some, uh, and obviously for uh, those events where we hold them, we also have great rights content. So in the build-up to those big events, um, uh, like the World Cup, we always try to identify some feature or service enhancement that really plays to those strengths. <coughs> so a good example of this would be our, uh, our player rater. So this is a new feature. We've, uh, we, 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 you may have seen it in action around the FA Cup at the weekend. We're in the, in the midst of te beta testing, rolling it out to audiences ahead of the summer. So um, essentially what it does is it allows people in real time to rate the players while, um, while the big football matches are on. Uh, obviously, um, so we're hoping that during uh, the England games and the World Cup, we'll have people rating those players in real time. And there's not, if we're completely honest, there's not that much revolutionary about the idea in itself. But what, what is really powerful for us is the way in which it cuts across all of digital TV, uh, sorry, digital TV and radio. So for example, um, we'll be able to market it at half time in the TV program, we'll drive huge audiences to it. Because of the reach of our online service, the results we'll get will be truly nationally representative of the people's view of how the England team have performed. And from that, it then feeds back in to our radio and TV content genres as a form of content that we, could, you know, we can talk about. So you know, there will be other rating products out there during the World Cup for sure, I bet there are, but only one of them will be talked about by Gary Lineker. You know, so that's a way in which we're able to reflect the people's voice and use our USP. Um, the little uh, grab on the end there as well, uh, obviously the rights, they're incredibly expensive. I'm sure we're all aware of the hyperinflation in sports rights. So we're constantly looking for new ways to get those rights out to people. So recently, uh, we've launched video notifications within our mobile app. Um, so anyone signed up to them over the weekend would have got the FA Cup goals straight to their phone. And that's just one way in which um, we can extract a bit more value from those rights deals and provide a better service for audiences. So why is this important in transforming the business? I think it's, re it's really important for us because we're essentially having an impact on a part of the business that's nothing officially to do with us. We're basically in conversations around <coughs> with program makers around the linear offering and how digital can change that proposition. So finally then, number six for us is creating a digital culture. <coughs> and that means much more than creating a great digital culture within our team. It means 
taking the best of that digital culture and using it across the rest of the organization. So I'll give you a couple of examples where we do that. Um, the first one is uh, showing our value outside of um, uh, the traditional tram lines that we work in. So a good example of that would be um, at the BBC, uh, the, the, uh, the senior management are often uh, used to having to do presentations, say, at the House of Commons or at the IOC, or maybe they're bidding for rights. And essentially, we, um, uh, we get involved in that process. We get our user experience team to run facilitative workshops where we come up with what the story and the narrative should be for those, uh, those things. And then we create the pitch and presentation. Uh, well I'd love to say I did this presentation myself, by the way, but uh, no. Uh, we uh, create a beautiful uh, presentation to help bring that to life. And that's one way in which we can show uh, our value. Another is where appropriate, we show uh, agile ways of working and share them with areas of the business to help improve how they're working. But the biggest game changer of all has to be the data-driven decision making. So at the moment, we have around 4 million people a week signed in to our BBC Sport service. And that means that we're able to build up a full profile of the types of content that people are using and segment it. And not only does that help us develop, develop the uh, product proposition, but it also impacts the editorial commissioning. So we're starting to use that data to inform higher up the chain decisions about what content we should be covering across all our platforms. So that's important in terms of helping us transform the business because we're showing the value, uh, the cross-cutting value that our team brings. And fundamentally, we're helping us improve our focus and make sharper and better decisions about the future of what we're doing. OK. So uh, what next? So there's six things we do. Uh, I'm afraid there were no silver bullets or panaceas or anything in there. But hopefully, there are a few ideas that are useful and get you thinking a bit about what you can do. Um, I think uh, it, it's fair to say it's going reasonably well for us uh, so far. But as ever, there's always much more to do and huge opportunity for us to bring greater, greater change as we uh, aim to transform the BBC. Um, and one of, the, one of the good things about doing my job is that you kind of you feel like you're standing on the shoulders of innovation giants, if you like. Um, BBC Sports has always been an innovator, right? Did the first outside broadcast, 1948. Did the first color TV, 1966. Right the way through to the Digital Olympics in uh, 2012. There's a real strong rep um, sort of track record and pedigree of delivering game-changing innovations. So as we head to 2020, and the stadiums and everything are being pulled together in Tokyo, there's a real, real opportunity for our team. So far, we've done a good job of putting BBC Sport on the internet. The next opportunity for us is to make BBC Sport of the internet, to make the most of the uh, emerging technologies and opportunities we have to better meet audience needs through technologies like VR, AR, machine learning, and voice. And if we can pull that off with the scale and reach of our offering, then we know that we can transform the face of sports coverage in the UK and hopefully live up to our mission of redefining free-to-air sport for a digital age. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.